What is going on guys, today I'm going to teach you how to go about doing a dust, dirt or frost material and the main purpose of this material is so that the top gets affected on all of them, this is very fine but on all of them the top gets affected but the bottoms don't, the bottoms are all completely black and clear right so I'm going to show you how to do something like that today so we'll turn around here, we'll go to our untextured ones, so the first thing you need to get is a noise map or a dirt map or whatever you want to call it and we're going to get the alphas from this so I am supplying one and this comes from Andrew Price video he released a blender video showing you how to do what I'm sort of going to show you but in blender and um, he, great, he gave out a good free texture that I slightly altered to be a bit more UE4 friendly so um, right click that and copy come to Photoshop and let me get rid of the one I had earlier file new make sure it's uh, right dimensions it's quite high you can lower it if you want but 2k just to show you the detail you can get from it um, then we're going to want to go image mode RGB because we do want a alpha in this make sure you're on channel click there Sele oh, select all of this from the RGB come into alphas come into alphas and when it works, select everything there. Oh, that's because I'm in my alphas when I do it. Okay, so make sure you're selecting this in the layers. So you select everything there in that channel, go to your alphas and paste it all in there. Paste it all in there. There you go. God, took too many attempts. Because you want your alphas to pretty much be what the texture looks like. And then we can just save that out. And dust. Or dust texture, whichever one and click yes and make sure you do it as a 32 bit because if you ain't doing it as 32 bit it will not register your alphas or they won't even export should I say so we can close that down close that down and let's go into our test folder and we'll create material and while we're here we might as well drag in our dust so just gra grab your dust and drag it in when it works go on drag in there you go. Wait for it to load and then opening your material. Now, if I load up my other material real quick, come over here, I split it off, that's the instance, I split it off into sections. So, what we have to deal with is direction mask, noise mask, our overall mask, color, and roughness. First thing I'm going to show us to do is the directional mask. So, what the directional mask will do is it will indicate what direction you want the material to be applied in so you can put this on any object and it will attempt to apply the so how I've set up anyway, it will attempt to apply the material in a Z axis so anything facing upwards pretty much will get the effect as you can see at the bottom none of it, at the sides I guess none of it like if I come down here you can see at the sides none of it but anything facing upwards will get the material Right, so that's the first thing we're going to do. So if I bring this over here, I can use that as reference. And let's load up the material I'm using for this. So, turn the material on, turn the material. So we're just going to edit the first one for now. So that material. All right, so we're doing the directional mask first. So what we want to do is write normal. Normal. Drag in pixel normal WS. So if we preview that, what it's doing is it's indicating each part, of the ob each part of the object through the Z, Y and X axis. So over here it's just Z which means it's blue. Over here it's Z and Y which makes it turquoise and over here it's Z and um, or Z and X which makes it purple and then over here it's all three which makes it grey. Then it's the exact same for the underneath as X, X reacting with Y and then Y. And then the side that none of it reacts to. Right, so we're going to go about showing us to, to separate the blue out from that because it's the one we want because blue represents our Z or our Z. So get a multiply, so hold M and left click, hold 3 and left click, drag that into there, make, oh actually you can change the value there, make sure it's 1. Make, make sure it's 1 value in blue. And connect that to there. So now if we preview that, going to cut out with a blue. Let's go to this over here. Now we need to get a mask. So let's write a mask and it will be under math 
and it'd be component mask. Now make sure you untick RG and you put on B because we only want the blue values. So drag it in there, and if I look at that, not convert to parameter, we start preview. You can see it's used that as a mask now. So that's our directional masking done. So you select the old press C, click on your comment box, and just change that to directional mask. Now these aren't set in stone names, I, I just sort of made them up because they sound good like directional mask and noise mask. So for your noise mask all you got to do is I don't know, let's drag that out, there you go, just drag in your mask, put that back up so you have a texture, hold U and left click and we'll get this which is a um, texture coordinate node which helps you tile the texture so if I actually preview it it's quite low res but if we turn on mirroring and turn this to 2.5 2.5 it'll allow us to sort of um, tile the material so if you didn't see the difference I'll turn it back and then I'll turn it back so it just makes it a little bit more detailed right now we need to connect this to a cheap contrast because cheap contrast allows us whoop, allows us to cut out the blacks from the whites a little bit more and we'll have that as point two. We'll also turn this to a parameter, so that way we have full control over it later. So to do that, see what I just did, you got to right click and then convert to parameter. I already done it, already converted it to a parameter. And you can convert back any moment, but yeah, right click, convert to parameter. And we want to call it, I don't know, thickness. Just a name you'll remember what it does. Then hold O, left click. Oh don't drag that part in, I apologise, drag your alphas into your cheap contrast I had to restart the video already because I forgot that alright so yeah drag your alphas into there not the um, actual colour alright so now hold L and left click and you make a lap and connect that to there that to there then hold 1 and left click and put that into there what this is going to do is so if I come into there and preview it what it's going to do is it's going to combine both together so we'll have our f like if I come to the mask like I had it before it's cutting out with the black and then what it's doing here is pretty much putting them both together and having it so you have noise and cutting off the bottom and just sort of applying it to the top right so now select one of this press C and we can call that noise mask or whatever you want doesn't matter as long as you know what it means you'll be fine set that we can put that mask and we can move that away now <sighs> quick save from UE4 there we go and we can quickly just move this over now we need to make the color for the object so press free left click twice so you can just hold free and so hold free and left click and you make two so we want one color for our underneath and one color for the dust dirt or frost we have on top so we're going to go and make the dirt first click here to that hold L and left click get your lap then the mask we just made we're going to mask at the bottom now if we review this we're already on our way to coloring it in and keeping the back the bottom black and you could change the bottom to if you want you don't have to keep it as black I'm just showing for this tutorial you can make it pink if you really like oh kind of messes up in a moment but yeah when, when you're in a bit it will completely fix itself but yeah you can change to whatever you like I'm just using it for black for the tutorial alright so then make a second cheap contrast over here and this is just some micromanaging now so when I left click to get constant one hold M and multiply one left click for a constant get that up to four and this is just letting us edit our thing a little bit better and then connect our colors back up to this one over here and then we want to make a clamp and what a clamp does is it makes sure your values don't go below zero or above one that way because when stuff are above one or below zero sometimes it can mess up so yep 
to see on that, we'll call that color, and that is your color now. Apologize if that was a little too fast, just quickly go back and um, you'll see what I've done. It's only a few simple nodes being connected up. I don't know when I made that second mask node. Huh. Um, now we need to work on our roughness. So I stop previewing. You can see it's cutting out that color now. It's cutting out a bit more because I put a bit more contrast and then I multiplied the contrast. So that was what this little bit here did. So now let's do our roughness. So we need another cheap contrast node. And I really like cheap contrast nodes. You don't need to use them as often as I do, but I, they allow you to have more control over all the contrast and how everything is affected. But then it's there, hold that, hold one left click and get that, make that a point 0.1. Yep, point 0.1. And hold M left click to get your uh, multiply. And then get another one down here, connect that up. And what this is going to be is just, just going to have allow us to have a little bit of control over some of the contrast and we'll turn the bottom one to 5 the top one to point 0.1 no sorry to 1 then right click it and convert to parameter and we'll call it uh, roughness and that will allow us to control the shine of the um, well kind of the shine of the um, the dirt. It will sort of allow us to make it more sort of um, pinpoint pixel or more sort of spreaded of a roughness. Now um, hold L, left click and you get LURP. And I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, it's just in case anyone forgets when doing this. Connect that up to there, connect that up to there. Now these are going to both control our um, the roughness of both the materials, but quickly I'm going to connect that up, bring it to there. There's roughness, and I need more room here. Ooh. Oh, God damn it, move all these away. It's making some quickly room. I like it being neat so I know what everything does. Right, so yeah, now we just need to turn this one to about 0.2. Which is going to control the roughness of our black shiny bit and the top bit and the zero, sorry, which is going to control our roughness of the dirt. And voila. So as you can see, the shine when it goes over where the dirt, the dirt is, it won't be shiny. But when it finds a free space, it becomes shiny. Now, after we've done this, if I click apply, well, first select all of this, press C and call it roughness. And let me just make sure I've made all the constants I told you guys to do. So yeah, go to your brown, convert to parameter, call it color, and that will allow us to have control over what color we want it to be. So if we want it to be white because of snow, we can, or gray for dust. So I believe, yep, that's all set up now. So if we click apply, and we basically kind of have um, the one we had over there, but I'm going to make some minor changes in a minute. So. Hover over it, right click, crimp material instance. I'm going to do it three times. There we go, kind of glitched for a minute. Drag this new one onto there. And no changes at the moment. And if I go back and go into what this one looked like, I can start using the values that I had. Ooh, wrong folder. Test, and that one. So we'll load up the one we just applied to it. And we can come into here and here. And we could turn this to about 0.7. I'll turn you to about 0.3. And we'll have more like the one we had over there. And the lighting, because of the angle, is going to make it look a bit different. Yep. So if we minimize, or, or we, yeah, we can close that. We have the texture over there. And if we want to duplicate what the frost one looked like for this second we just made, double click in there, turn on color, turn that to white. Um, actually, I think I tinted it slightly blue, I'm not sure, but make it very white. And you can't see it in the preview, let me go like this, there you go. You can start editing it from the preview, so you can start looking at what it looked like, go into your roughness and your um, thickness, and I quickly load up my other one to see what I did for it. So come into here, so I got that to 1.5 and 0.2. 
and it sometimes the texture doesn't load and looks a bit funky but yeah and look we've got our frost which they have over there and to do our last one just get the third uh, material instance we're not using uh, get back into test third material instance and once again I'm going to quickly check what I use so if you don't know what I'm doing when I'm clicking them I'm just looking at how I made them so on this new one I made 5 and 1.5 and a very dark brown so apply both of them on open it up oh wait this one sorry in the test folder um, which was free I believe and uh, we can go boom boom and it was 5 and 1.5 1.5 and it was pretty much just a darker grey oh turn on colour darker grey oh wait more there and oh I minimised the whole thing like a silly and I think I accidentally used the one over there but yeah and apply that and it's taking a while to load but yeah then you get your sort of dust material if you put more time into it, you could get these looking much more realistic, but these are just very basic ways, basic materials I've used over the top. So I hope this helped anyone that wanted to learn how to do something like this, to sort of get a material to sit on top of something but not be shown underneath it. Uh, thank you for watching, and bye-bye.